This is your typical North American suburb. Here you will find massive swaths of cookie cutter single family homes and a couple of amenities such as bike paths, parks, and schools. There is an overwhelming monotony to suburbs. They all look and feel like this. Personally, I find these communities to be rather dull and lifeless. The only people around are either walking a dog, doing yard work, riding a bike, or jogging. There aren't a whole lot of activities that draw outsiders to the area or provide residents a reason to stay within the suburb. The only option to escape this mundane environment involves getting into a car and driving somewhere else. Walking to a more desirable location is not much of an option because some suburbs lack sidewalks entirely. Even if it does have sidewalks, there are a lot of windy, maze-like streets with many dead ends, which makes short distances feel a lot longer to traverse. It may also require crossing busy roads, leading to perilous journeys just to get out of the suburb. When it comes to riding a bike, the bike paths are really only there for recreational use. They aren't useful for a commuter trip or running errands because they don't take you anywhere in particular. Owning a car is a requirement for everyone who lives in the suburb. If anyone is dissatisfied with suburban living, it can be hard to pinpoint why, especially since a lot of suburbs share these exact same traits. Part of the issue lies in Euclidean zoning. In the United States, residential, commercial, and industrial developments are built separately from each other. Similarly to a game of Sim City or City Skylines, different parcels of land are assigned to residential, commercial, and industrial buildings, and that's the only thing that can be developed on those parcels. There is nothing wrong with Euclidean zoning as a concept. It is a good idea to separate developments with incompatible land uses. The issue is, throughout the United States, residential and commercial businesses are built completely separately from each other, as if there is no value in integrating grocery stores, restaurants, cafes, bars, bakeries, and other kinds of compatible businesses within the residential community. Every single time someone has to run errands or wants to perform an activity that is not provided by the few amenities within the suburb, they have to get into their car and drive to the nearest strip mall, box store, or outlet mall that actually has what they are looking for. When they arrive, they are met with a sea of asphalt in front of several familiar franchise establishments. These are unpleasant places that nobody really wants to spend time in. You just go there, buy your thing, and go home. Nothing interesting happens in the suburb itself. People who can't drive may feel trapped within the seemingly endless suburban sprawl. People who can drive may end up getting stuck in a rut where all they do is drive to work, run errands, and drive home. Without any reprieve from the same routine, the suburbs can be a rather dreadful and unhappy place to live. There are few opportunities to unwind from work in a home away from home or to meet people during chance encounters. Suburbia is devoid of what is known as the third place. The term third place was coined by Ray Oldenburg in his book The Great Good Place. He discusses that there must be a balance between three different kinds of places. The first place, where you live. The second place, where you work and the third place where you hang out and socialize. A third place is the epicenter that establishes and emboldens the sense of community. It represents a neutral ground where there is no social hierarchy. Everyone is treated as an equal. It is a location where socialization is the priority. A third place should encourage people to talk to each other as a way of meeting new people, strengthening existing bonds, and having chance encounters with old friends. There should be regulars who routinely use the third place. The third places that Oldenburg describes are difficult to come by in North America. A suburb may have a library or a park where people can congregate, but it still excludes almost any other kind of place. For the most part, the only thing someone is going to find in a suburb is a bunch of single-family homes. Everything feels out of the way. Depending on how much time someone spends commuting, they may be too tired to actually drive somewhere else to experience the third place. 
so visiting a third place to unwind from any work or home stresses may have to be reserved for Fridays or the weekend so it can be more convenient. In the meantime, suburbanites may have to settle for watching TV, playing video games, or socializing using social media. Technically, social media platforms and online multiplayer games may be able to function as a third place. However, studies have shown that prolonged use in social media websites, particularly Facebook, result in worsening mental health. In addition, online forums only need one person to have a bad day to act as a troll and to derail the entire conversation. It's a spiral of negativity. Just one person waking up cranky can create a spark and, because of discussion, context, and voting, these sparks can spiral into cascades of bad behavior. Bad conversations lead to bad conversations, people who get downvoted come back more, comment more, and comment even worse. The internet allows bad behavior to flourish because there are no social consequences for it. Someone could be a troll one day and come back to the same forum or website under a different username and act as though nothing happened. It requires far more moderation to keep online discussions healthy than in-person discussions. Social media can function as a third place, but it does not quite provide the same sense of community or hospitality as a physical location. Without there being many accessible third places, People are more likely to experience loneliness during childhood. Children who grow up in car-dependent suburbs do not have the independent mobility to bring themselves to libraries, parks, friends' houses, or other places where they could socialize among their peers. Either they have to beg their parents for a ride or stay at their house all day. So they have fewer opportunities to participate in extracurricular activities or general socialization and play. Not being able to explore the neighborhood and form bonds with the community has been observed to cause an increase in loneliness and more fear of crime. The study, Current Fear of Crime, Sense of Community, and Loneliness in Adolescence, analyzed 789 participants and found when children are allowed to play and socialize in public places on their own, they generally have a greater sense of community and less fear of crime. Essentially, there is a feedback loop where being able to play in public places without parental supervision reduces the fear of crime, reduces the fear of loneliness, and increases the overall sense of community. People feel more connected with one another. In a suburban environment, children are isolated from the rest of the neighborhood, and they are given fewer opportunities to explore their community on their own. So they end up having fewer friendships, they feel lonelier, and the general distrust to the community that they don't know about may manifest into a fear of crime. The feeling of loneliness may not even go away upon entering adulthood. A national study published in 2019 showed that 39% of high school seniors said they often feel lonely in 2017, an increase from 26% in 2012. 38% of high school seniors also often reported feeling left out in 2017 compared to 30% in 2012. The study also noted that adolescents spend less time interacting with peers, including getting together or socializing with friends, going to parties, going out, dating, and going to movies. The most lonely adolescents are those who have few in-person social interactions and a lot of time spent with social media. Adding on to this, the healthcare and insurance company Cigna surveyed Americans and found that more than half of U.S. adults are considered lonely. Breaking down the data further, young adults are twice as likely to be lonely than seniors, and more than twice as many young adults as older adults experience feeling left out. Cigna proposes tackling the loneliness epidemic requires building and reinforcing social connectivity at work and in the community, along with making people feel more included in public spaces. An important step to reducing loneliness and making people feel happier about the communities they live in is reassessing the residential communities that dominate our landscape. Suburbia, minus a few exceptions, is a terrible place to live because it is soul-crushingly isolated from anything that makes urban environments interesting. 
since everyone drives, the suburbs feel empty and lifeless. There are no people around unless they are doing yard work, walking a dog, or exercising. There is nothing drawing outsiders to the suburbs because there is nothing of value to someone who does not live there. In order to instill a greater sense of community and togetherness, suburbia needs to be built in a way that makes it feel less isolated. This means integrating cafes, bars, restaurants, plazas, grocery stores, bakeries, and other types of compatible developments that could provide more amenities than parks and recreational bike paths. Adding more third places would allow more people to want to visit the suburb, and it would allow more residents to feel more content with where they live since they aren't constantly having to get into a car and drive somewhere else. Accomplishing this starts with updating the zoning code to allow more variety in what can be developed. Reno, much like any other typical North American city, has massive swaths of single-family homes and tiny patches of box stores, strip malls, and outlet malls. These parcels should be rezoned to allow more compatible commercial developments to be integrated within the suburb. City ordinances such as minimum lot sizes, road width requirements, height restrictions, and minimum parking requirements should also be revised to allow a variety of other kinds of homes to live in with a greater density. Commercial businesses do not have to be built at the expense of fewer land to develop homes. Both can coexist in the same area, and they should. There should be mixed-use developments, with commercial businesses on the bottom floor and residential homes on upper floors, along with other kinds of homes that you can't find in a typical suburb that is tailored to people's needs. By allowing more people to live in a centralized location and having more third places within the neighborhood, gathering and socializing would be more accessible. Instead of driving across town to visit the desired location, people could just take a slight detour from their usual trip and take the time to unwind. There is plenty of room to allow small businesses to flourish within residential communities. The problem is, a lot of the space is currently reserved for cars. Driveways, garages, and on-street parking takes up a lot of the available land. If the suburbs were designed in a way that allowed people to rely on transit, walking, or biking, they wouldn't need so many cars per household, and the space would be freed up so it can be used for corner stores, libraries, coffee shops, plazas, playgrounds, and other developments that could make the built environment more interesting. There are better land uses than accommodating a neighborhood of cars. Finally, the built environment needs to be hospitable for people who are not inside of a vehicle. The little touches, such as car-free locations with comfortable benches and shade, surrounded by a variety of different third places, makes a location more inviting. People would be more willing to explore the neighborhood outside of a car if it was actually designed for people, not the cars that they are driving. In a community that embraces human interaction and makes people want to traverse the built environment without a car, taking the time to unwind from home or work-related stresses would be trivial, as places to do so would always be within reach. To see what this looks like, I recommend viewing the Not Just Bikes and Alan Fisher videos on suburbs that don't suck. Overall, combating loneliness means having fewer lonely places. Instead of people being isolated in their little boxes of ticky-tacky, third places should be integrated in their neighborhood. So socializing and relaxing in a home away from home is an accessible activity that anyone can participate in, regardless of whether or not they have a car.